This is Boxing Tickets NA in association with SB Sports. We're delighted to be joined by the, the main honcho of Colin Box once again. He's got a new name now. He's Jamie McElroy because he's been out on the golf course. But delighted to be joined once again with Jamie Colin. How are you, mate? Oh, good, Morty. Oh, good, mate. You're looking very summerful, I guess, obviously out playing golf today. You have to have the bright colours on or is that in case you get lost in the golf course? <laughs> in the rough too much, yeah. <laughs> Who's a better brother at... at at golf then obviously you always say Michael's it doesn't, come, doesn't come with comparison it doesn't even terrible comparison golf, does it? he's absolutely shocking and I'm not much better but I'm a lot better than him <laughs> fantastic I guess um, we sort of talked back in December obviously the potential of the field of card obviously in August I guess obviously the ideal scenario would obviously have been Mick headlining but I guess obviously even more so Paddy's finally getting his moment to headline in the field so close to home I'm sure you're absolutely buzzing as much as he is. Yeah, most definitely. Um, if it wasn't Michael, I thought it was always going to be Paddy. He was the natural successor to, to a big native Fela. He's earned his right. He's he's earned his stripes. He's come through the hard way. And, you know, like for younger fighters coming through and people who were in his position, not coming in with the big Olympic medal, not coming through for the with all the fanfare of being an elite national champion, stuff like that. Building it on the on the on the the small hall scene coming right through and undercards having to take risky fights and from about twenty nineteen, you know if every fight was a risky fight a fifty fifty fight, he's um he's really a, like a template for the for fighters who were in that position who are in that position and are, are coming through without all that um fan for to really hard it to get the best and get the most out of your career and Harry Harry performs in the gym, Harry handles himself out of the ring, Harry kind of handles himself in the gym, um, lives the life, and it comes all through. He's He is the natural successor, and it's fantastic that he's able to do it on, in, in the Falls Park. He has big nights, he's had big nights there, but this is the biggest. The pressure now is different. Expectations now have, have changed from party. It's not, it's not about just winning no more. It's about how you look when you win. The, the expectations changed. It, People expect a bit more from you. They look, they want you to look better than what you've looked previously. All these wee things as pressures parties have to having to deal with now that it's different. You know, it's it, it really is different. People are not expecting a 50-50 fight anymore. They're expecting Paddy McCroy to go out and do a job and look good doing it. So it's um it's a big fight. It's a very tough fight. Steve Woodall is coming to win. Uh, based his career majority majority of his career in the US and in in South America, a lot of knockouts, heavy handed. Came back over to the UK recent enough. His only loss to Rhodes, uh, to Steve Rhodes is a is a well recognised loss. So it's it's not like it was a, a nobody. Um, when we proposed the fight to them, they jumped at the chance and they're coming. I think he said they're bringing about a hundred, two hundred with them. So that's a man who's who's confident and a team that's confident. And it's only going to bring the best out in Paddy McCrory. Well, obviously, I guess, you know, the thing is where, where you say there, where obviously it's it's not really expected people to expect Paddy to win now. Obviously, then pressures will sort of come with that. And we've obviously seen the pressures, obviously, recently on Katie and then obviously on Michael. Obviously, not the pressure sort of got too much to them, but I guess Paddy's been used to that sort of pressure in a way where he probably hasn't been expected to sort of get as far as he, as he has in boxing and He's sort of continuing to keep living the dream through every fight. He's not getting too far ahead. As you say, he's probably the perfect example of a boxer to have because he's not ready to probably think to you, when I win, what's next? He knows he has to stay focused on Steve Woodhall. Yeah, most definitely. Um, but but that's this, this we've sat down for the past two years and we've kind of started to plan things out. And he is, his mentality has changed. He, he doesn't have a mentality of, you know, an undercard fighter anymore. He does have mentality and has expectations himself and has dreams and beliefs and, and confidence is building. He knows now after every fight, I think we sit down on a Monday or a Tuesday and we're, he's, we've already got a plan for the next one. And after this, after December, um, you know, sorry, after May 27th, everything looked a bit bleak for, for what we're looking to do. And when, when we had sat down, I, I knew then, then and there that the right move was party the headline and, and the feel is the best place for it. Our relationship with, with Phil is has always been good and you know, we were only unable to do it last year. But and I don't think they believed me when I'd said that we'll be back next year. You know, just 
we need we need to kind of go and do our own thing for a year and we'll be back. Uh, and I think Kevin had said when when someone kind of leaves and goes elsewhere, they don't usually come back. But we made sure that we did, and um, very very excited because it does feel different. It's not just a boxing event; it's an entertainment night. It's it's a night out. It's a night out for the missus. It's a night out for the kids. It is a real family affair, and I think everyone really has a great night out at, at the field. The park just has a different feel, a special feel, and especially to the to the local lads. You know, the likes of Sean McComb, the likes of Paddy. The guys who are from the earth who have who have grown up in the Falls Park, this one does hit different. It's it's I know I've I've been at every one of them obviously you've done obviously even and, and Michael's obviously case the, the very first one and then the plan was to sort of go to twenty thousand I guess you know it's like building and they'll sort of come the field of dreams moment but it's really coming full circle for Potty because obviously it is breakout moment there from the first one obviously stopping Steve Collins Jr. in the last round to become the Celtic champion and now do you think mm. that he sort of came so far? In a short, you know, that three, three, four year period, it's crazy to think where he's come from starting off the TV card in BT Sport, you know, headline in the card. It's, as I said, everybody can have a dream and a vision, and Potty's getting there because of obviously all the hard work he's put in. Most definitely, yeah. And as you said, Steve Collins was a big need for him. Uh, I touched on it before that fights from 2019 were all 50 50, you know, make or break. Potty loses that fight. I think he had said he was going to pack it in if he lost that fight. And that was the kind of mentality he had back then, was roll the dice every time. Let's see what comes up. And he came up trumps every time. Again, the Russian, Sergei Gorbov, Gorbanov, um, I, like, was really tough fight. The, the Russians, Russian TV bought the rates. They really expected their guy to win. Uh, Al Siesta, who'd done the fight with me, fully expected his guy to win. And there was, around about that time, I'd seen a different look in Paulie's eye, a different hunger in his eye. And he spoke differently. It wasn't make or break anymore. It was he's building for something bigger in the future. And that was another massive night. It was a fantastic performance. It was, a, I think it was a standout performance because at that stage, no one had done anything like that to Gorbanov. And he was tough. He was rugged. He was coming to win. He was relentless. And I thought it was really going to be problematic for Paulie similar to what Steve Woodall is going to bring uh, August 4th, this is where we see the best of him. And that's why I'm like, my confidence for him and my excitement for him in this night against a, a real hungry, driven fighter, this is this is going to bring the best out of him. I, th- I think in a nutshell, sort of, I know when I spoke to Paddy, obviously after, you know, May 27th, obviously he was downbeaten, sort of, he was ridiculing his performance and I was sort of saying to him, you know, what actually happened, obviously, came straight in, obviously, after Michael was beat. It could have been easy to sort of drop the head and sort of everything else. He was very mature. He didn't get hit with anything. The, the opponent, obviously, in the SSE covered up very well. But in mm-hmm. some ways, probably that drives Potty more that he's, he's critical of his own performance because he's chasing perfection. He wants to entertain the fans. So for Steve Woodhall, obviously, looking at the last Potty's last couple of fights, he'll go, I can beat this guy easy. But Potty's obviously main frame is he knows he can do a lot better. Well, he was put in two two situations he didn't want to be in in, in his last two fights. Um, we were chasing a big fight in December. Sorry, December we weren't. It had a sore hand, so he wanted out. He wanted to be on the big card in December. It was very raw after Germany. He didn't really give his hands time to rest and. We took the, the 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 position of not taking too much of a risk, doing it rounds against a, a good enough journeyman type opponent, um, which was always hard to look good against. And then in in May, it was just unfortunate that the, the position of of where he was going to be on the card. It was another good test, a tough enough Argentinian, somebody who was going to provide rounds. We wanted party, you know, our we had our deal with BT Sport was come and box and get. Get one guy on the on the undercard as well as Mick and BT get the other guy. So our guy we chose was Potty, and the way that it was just all falling. Um, he was going to go after Michael. It was unfortunate for him because he is the kind of guy who likes the feel of the buzz, and and he does have a good relationship with Michael that he didn't want to be on after his first thing he done after the fight was immediately come into Michael's change room and 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 console him. So. That's that shows him. That shows what he's like. It's just it was unfortunate them two kind of fates, but also 
the flip side that from my point of view is we finally got rounds, finally got to see different things. Mentality for um the fight in December wasn't right. I wasn't happy with how he was approaching it and he got through that fight and and and, and he learned a lot from that fight where he was hitting people and he wasn't going over and his expecting to go over and you no know, small things like that were he probably would have, should have learned it earlier in his career, but he was just hitting people in the raw falling. But then again with the Argentinian, he needed that, you know, a veteran type fighter who was able to cover up, who was able to get hurt and then survive and make it rough and make it messy. And these were all blessings in my in my in my point of view, it was all blessings because the likes of Steve would all probably wouldn't have took this fight if um if he if he didn't, if he did blast out the, the last two guys as well and and continued to knock out straight. But yeah, I, I'm I'm happy with the progression of how he's been going and we're on the verge of big things, but it's just about biding time as well and and um making sure the right fights happen at the right time and this is the kind of fight that's really gonna get the juices going for Potty. And I although obviously moving the PBCs, obviously not just a massive blow for Eddie Hearn, the zone, but for pretty much even for Potty or others maybe potentially looking at that glamour tie of Canelo, it looks to be now that his next three fights are locked in by PBC. But I guess that lottery sort of Canelo probably, probably probably in this next three fights sort of has the and I've seen Eddie Hearn's comments obviously in Berlanga saying that Potty doesn't have the profile, but how do you get the profile if you're not given an opportunity? Um yeah, it's 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 a bit it's a bit of a hard one to kind of put your finger on about the profile situation. Uh, is it probably, one of them as a compliment nearly in a way for the fact that they know he's high risk, risk. high risk low reward there's no real reward for fighting Paul McCrory and he's going to give you a very very hard night and I think he beats Berlanga um, to get the profile maybe you do Potty and Jason Quigley next if you really wanted the profile if Quigley was profile enough high enough profile which he was challenging Demetrius Andrade and and, and fighting in the States against Shane Mosley Jr., etc. So he, he did have the profile on the zone that worked. But a big fight then to get the Garner profile would be Potty and, and, and Jason Quigley. Um, if Potty comes through August 4th, that would be a massive fight, a massive fight for Ireland, but also a massive fight for both guys because of Potty needs a name. Um, he needs the profile. He needs someone to kind of to p- p- propel him onto the next level. Quigley performed brilliantly against Berlanga and, and won every round bar the knockdown rounds and it was really testament to him and Andy and what their their uh, resolve was and, and their, their training. Their, they kind of keep in and keep getting up and keep fighting back. But for Quigley coming back, fighting number three with the WBA, boost, you know, get the rankings game, play it back like that and, and a massive fight for Ireland. Uh, really, really big fight for Ireland is is, is Jason Quigley against Paddy McCrory. That's, that's a, a, a mouth water and one obviously just to think of that. I guess Jason maybe will obviously want to get a, a win maybe in the meantime, but can maybe be set up potentially for November for, for Michael's return, for Katie Taylor's scheduled obviously rematch for Carmen in November. So there can be big cards dangled, obviously a big card and big TV. Um, Obviously looking at the rest of the card, obviously Sean McComb obviously defending his WBO European title again and he's, he's actually fighting a former EBU European um, challenger. challenger. Very weird. When I was talking to Sean, I was sort of saying like the guy lost, the guy won a, lost a split decision, but won 116, 115 in the card. It was it was scary, obviously, how you, I guess it was that hometown sort of points maybe thing there, but, but, but obviously it's a, it's a great test for Sean and Obviously, I wonder if he's going to do another walkout from the house to the Falls Park. Yeah, yeah, he could. He really could. Um, skips down the Glen Road and through Turf Lodge. He, he could just hop over the back fence. If he wasn't fighting, he would probably do that. But um, Alejandro Moya is is a serious test for Sean. As you said, lost a split decision for the, the legitimate EBU title. And it's a real test. Again, coming with confidence. 50, 60 tickets coming across from Spain. So they're all confident in the, in the performance. It's it's another step in the right direction. Sean is on the verge of big names. Uh, Adam Azim, you know, the 140 division is very, very, you know, very, very good. And I thought his performance against Casey Benjamin was was excellent. It was a great fight, a great start. He, he tired later on and, and Benj- let Benjamin back into the fight. But given how close Benjamin pushed Dalton Smith, 
shows that Sean McComb is in and around that bracket. The, the likes of Sam Maxwell, Dalton Smith, Adam Azim, they're all the big fights for Sean right now. It's just about keep, keeping the momentum here in Ireland that uh, that builds him to the next level because he does have he does have the as we're saying the profile. He does have the profile now for fighting on Sky Sports, getting a, a you know a good great win on Sky to, to to jump into the next level and the next level is Azim's and, and Dalton Smiths. I'm sure the one you're probably maybe delighted with as well in the field is obviously the return of the croc, obviously back to Belfast. The last time he fought in Belfast was November 20, 2021. So it's nearly it's nearly two years pretty much coming up since he's last fought in Belfast. He's obviously had a couple of fights with Billy Nelson over in Scotland, but I'm sure he's delighted to see obviously Lewis back at home and, and obviously getting himself ready to get back in the big fights. He's on the verge of massive fights. Um we talk about exciting divisions and the welterweight division is always exciting. I'm just glad to see him back. Um, active activity was the main thing when when uh, when I spoke to Billy Nelson uh, and we sat down and we said a bit of plan. We said one three fights back to back, uh, and then massive fights towards the end of the year. Titles towards the end of the year. We're we're, we're looking at titles, you know, even now and kind of the cracks on the verge of something big. And again, Lake Potty. These are the next on the on the conveyor belt of talent. These are the next guys coming through who are going to be headlining fights, headlining shows in Belfast. And he he's he need, he needed the two fights recently to get him back on track. New coach and Billy, who's really driving him hard and and has took him in under his wing, cooks for him. You know he lives across the street. He's really really kind of took him in as one of his own. Both Rangers men, so they go down the Abrax every Saturday and, and and watch Rangers lose, which is brilliant. So um, they uh, they get the 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 to wallow in the misery together. Um, but yeah, I, I'm very very excited. I, I rate Billy Nelson as a coach. I've always I've always rated him very highly. I've known him since um the Ricky Burns days and John Simpson when he came across to fight Martin Lindsay. Um, so I've always had a good relation with Billy and when, when I sat down with Lewis and said about different places to look at Billy was one of the top guys on the list to kind of go and see and I knew it was a perfect relationship to, to, to match together because Billy cracks the whip really hard and Croc needs someone to kind of keep pushing him but he, Billy's never seen talent like it and that's one thing he'd said to me I think after a week two weeks he says I've got a world champion on my hands here and it's just about getting the opportunity and getting a bit of activity and that's what we kind of wanted to do and He's there. He's there or thereabouts. It's just about big fights now for Lewis. It's just about getting something nailed on and, and his own headline. We proved it November, I think it was 2019 again, twenty or maybe 2021. Um, it's COVID years, I lose it. But in November, when he when he fought the, 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 Armenian, kid, the Armenian kid, it proved to me then that this guy can really headline, he can be a headline actor in Belfast. It, the people took to him brilliantly, and I'm, I'm just I'm delighted about his his progress in the past year. And last year was really tough, and for most boxers, it could have knocked them right down, and you know could have been the, could have been a walk on away moment, and we would have lost one of their brightest talents on on the island. And I'm just happy that he's he's resurrected himself and and reinvented himself over in Glasgow, and is back on the on on the hunt for tails. Obviously, I know that uh, me and you sort of at the similar way of length sometimes in. I like to see, obviously, domestic fights. You love to see domestic fights. Maybe potentially not saying any names, but is there any potential of domestic dust-ups at the field? We've got two. We've got two in the, in the pipeline. Um, someone is fighting this weekend, so we're waiting he gets that one over, and we, we should be announcing next week on one, and then we're, we're still waiting to lock in another one. But, yeah, we're, we like to have uh, domestic fights, all Irish fights, uh, and, and hopefully we'll have two of the the BUA Celtic belts on the on the line as well. So we're we want to do as much as them as possible. We're hoping to try and do uh, something similar with Fergus Quinn, but his performances recently have left him as the unwanted man on the Irish boxing scene. That no one really wants to face him. So we're looking for a big fight as well for Fergus because. Like I think we can move very fast with Fergus. Fergus wants to move very fast, and I would like to rein him in a bit. But when you watch him in the gym, um, and I think everyone watches him in the gym, say they 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 can't speak highly enough of Fergus. 
I obviously broke something the other day, sort of, I think I put a bit of teaser out, and I think I got a, a few choice words from you, but Conlon Boxing looks like it could be off to Dublin in September. Possibly, possibly. We are planning something, yep, definitely planning something. Um, should be locking in or, or walking away, but I hope to be locking in something in the next week, next week, two weeks, and announcing something in the next week or two weeks. So, um. What we're working on is is a bit different, uh, and something that is 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 exciting. So, it's it's, yeah, it could be big. As I was sort of saying the in the week of obviously Michael's Michael and Lopez, obviously it looks like we're having a massive year. Like the feel is now going to be the tenth card of the year, potential obviously the Dublin card if it goes ahead to be the eleventh, and then there's other promoters. This this could really be, you know, a massive year for for Irish boxing. I know. We sort of look at the the negatives we've sort of had over the last month or so with Katie and Michael losing, but the talents coming through there in the next five to ten years, we're going to have some amazing nights of boxing. Yeah, one well, million percent, and you know you touched on Katie and Michael losing, but even the fact that they're putting on these big, massive fights, massive events here here in Ireland, um, gives younger fighters. Uh, a goal to say that's that's where I want to go. That's that's my pinnacle. That's what the, what I want to reach. That's my kind of dream night to go and uh, emulate and achieve and go one better than than the likes of Katie and Michael and, and stuff like that and getting the big nights for themselves. So it is keeping the convert the 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 belt moving. So yeah, I think the keeping the small hold scene is is paramount. And you know, Mark has a show on Saturday. It's it's I, it's what's needed for the the con- continuous flow of Irish boxing and Irish boxers, getting them active, keeping them out, keeping things moving, keeping big fights in the pipeline. You know, Gainer against Murph is a fantastic fight. It was a great fight the first time. Get doing it again is, is brilliant. I know Mark had plans elsewhere with it, but bringing it back to Belfast and keeping it on one of his own shows is great because it keeps, again, the conveyor belt moving, fighters getting out, fighters keeping active. Uh, and not going stagnant and not waiting for the big promoters coming in, the big TV networks coming in, just to, to kind of be used as either cannon fodder or being picked off or putting as a as a float on an undercard. So that's that's what we need. We need consistency. We need activity. We need to keep the the ball rolling. And I think we we still are in a fantastic time for Irish boxing. You know, Katie will be back in November. Meg will be back around about November, December, and we can keep this ball moving, keep these big fights going. Obviously, another interview done last week, obviously Kevin Cronin has sort of given his, given his love for for yourself and Michael and obviously Colin and Boxing for obviously how he's dealt with things in Galway. And he's obviously looking at an Irish title fight now with Craig McCarthy. Um, it just seems to be that, I don't know, it seems the last couple of years, like we obviously the last Irish title fight that obviously went the distance when it was the winner was before COVID. In Gary Cully and Joseph Patrick, and, and now we're sort of looking at it and we're going nearly every couple of months, we're getting Celtic and Irish champions, and you're going, this is, this is unheard of before, but it, it just shows you how the numbers are coming, that every division is nearly stacking up with, with really good fights to make. Well, I think that comes down to the fighters themselves. Uh, Kevin Cronin and, uh, and Jamie Morrissey, to be fair, both of them, they took risks that they didn't really need to take at that stage of their careers, and something that I really liked in Kevin was his his tenacity to really want to do, to really push the boundaries, really want to push himself and test himself and put himself in bigger fights, you know, fighting up at late heavyweight and then moving down to super middleweight. He's a big super middle. And then straight away, wants a big fight at super middleweight, wants the champion, wants Craig McCarthy, wants big fights, we're prepared to go anywhere for it. So I really have great time for him and his team. That they're 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 really good people. I enjoyed working them with working with them in Galway. And if there's an opportunity to work together in the future, be happy enough because I, I know when you work with fighters like that, you get honesty and, and you get you get what, what I kind of like in, in a fighter and what I was in a fighter in terms of honesty. And, and I, I kind of left it all on the line and, and them kind of guys give you everything. Um, so working with someone like Kevin would be yeah, would be it would be a dream that he's he's a good guy. Obviously just want to finally touch him seeing the timer sort of dwindling down there and I think I've got more time out of you tonight than I was expecting to get but obviously tickets are on sale tomorrow I think I'm going to put this out now tonight but tickets are on sale tomorrow from Ticketmaster at 10am starting from 30 quid right up to 150 
he's expecting yeah. a massive crowd. Obviously, come the fourth of August, I guess with no Michael there, it's hard to obviously guess how the numbers are going to be. But outdoor, people's allowed to drink. You know, mm-hmm. there's the music, there's good fights and everything else. You don't know what the numbers are really going to be. Uh, no, I think we're expecting about five thousand. We're we're expecting about five thousand for this, given the fact of uh, what we've done on previous shows and and the lads we have on it. And as you said, this this night isn't. If it's a bit more than boxing when you're attached to the fella. They it just becomes an event and it becomes a night out. And I, we, I think we'll do five thousand. I'm pretty confident in that. There and you know we're expecting ex- an, an exceptional night. How we're going to lay it out, and we'll have one or two bit more announcements regarding music. Um, we'll have some late performances, etc. So it'll be a it'll be a, it'll be a big night, big night at the fates. Every sort of night at the field, like I can always remember a couple of years ago, D. Sullivan remember was stopped in the, the undercard early. Yeah. Every year there sort of seems to be something at the field where it's a moment you have to be there for. And I guess exactly. credit credit to you again once again because you're making ticket prices low. You could easily, I guess with the way the world is at the moment as well, it, it could be so easy to increase things, but you're keeping things smaller to get more people in, which obviously will then drive more people in there occasionally coming to more shows. Yeah, it's it. It's just keeping keeping people happy in terms of getting out. It, times are hard as well, so you don't want to be hitting the pocket. But it's giving value for the money, real real value for the money, and everyone can leave happy on after after a night that we put on because I think we we do underprice the, the tickets, but it's it's to accommodate our people who want to get there, and I think we they deserve the the lower prices because they have backed us through in tough times, especially coming out of lockdown. Doing our shows in the Odyssey, then then the big fights with Michael in in um in May. So, yeah, it's 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 for the people, and that's what the, the festival is. It's a festival for the people. Yes, well, look, I've got you there at the right time. It's nine o'clock. Your favorite programs coming on the TV uh, on Channel Four, Love Island. Uh, you tried to tell me last night you didn't know it was on, but I've got you finished off in good time. You can go and sit down and watch your Love Island in peace. Very candy, and Morty. Very candy, mate. But, but obviously it's great to catch up as normal uh, as always um, obviously we'll look forward to seeing all the announcements coming soon, soon and I'm sure we'll catch up with you very soon and get another chat good morning, all the best yeah, take care, care. thank you, thanks, bye 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 bye